I'm going to be demonstrating Zojo, which is a cross-platform development tool that you can use to create native apps for the desktop, for mobile, and for web. Now, it's easy enough to learn if you're new to programming, but it's also powerful enough for people who do programming for a living. This will just be a quick demo. I'm going to give you a taste of what it's like to build apps in Zojo. And I'm going to be doing this on a Mac, but Zojo also runs on Windows and Linux. And in fact, Zojo is created with Zojo. So when you first fire up Zojo, you get this choose a project dialog and you can choose your project type. If you want to build a desktop app, you choose that, a web app, a console app, which is essentially a desktop app, but without any user interface, without menus or windows, or an iOS app. Now I'm going to start with a desktop app that's already selected. So I just click OK to start. OK, now when you start a new project in Zojo, the Zojo window opens. And over on the left hand side, we have what's called the navigator. This shows the contents of your application, your project. Uh, you've got the app, you've got a window, because every desktop app needs at least one window. And you have your menu bar. Uh, this is also where pictures you use, sounds, other windows. There's all kinds of stuff that can show up in here for editing. And when you select something in the navigator, this, this middle section is called the editor, and, and an editor will appear that's appropriate for what you want to edit. In this case, it's a window, so we have a window editor, looks like a window. And over here on the right, we've got the library, which is all the different controls that you can use when building your user interface in Zojo. Now, I'm going to build a simple uh, contact list editor. So I'm going to grab a field and position that. You'll notice there's these little lines to help you find the margins and things like that. It makes it really easy to line things up. I'll drag out a button. We'll put that about there. Let's line this up with the button. There we go. And then I'm going to grab a list box that'll show a list of all the contacts we enter. So I'm going to resize that to fill the window. There we go. And let's uh, change the text of this button to add. Great. All right. So we've um, we've started the user interface. Now what I want to do is make it so that when the user types in this field and clicks the add button the contents of that field will show up in this list. All right, so the first thing I want to do is go over here to the inspector. This is another pane that can appear on the right-hand side, and it just shows you various properties of the thing you select. So I'm going to change the names of these controls. I'm, because I'm going to write some code, I want to give them more meaningful names. So let's call this one name field, and let's make the add button add button, that's a clever name, and then the list box will be people, oops, people list. There we go. All right, the next step is to write some code. Now this is going to be a very simple demo, so I'm just going to add one line of code, and since I want the code to run when the user presses the add button, that's where we're going to start. All you need to do is double click on the control when you want to add some code to it, and you get this dialog box uh, where you can add code to an event. An event is something that happens to the control. Now in this case, the add button has a pressed event and it's already selected. And as you can imagine, that's the uh, event that fires when the user presses the button. And if you have any doubts about that, there's a description here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that switches the view to the code editor. You can see we're in the pressed event of the add button, which is a control on window one. In fact, I can click back to window one or click back to the code editor for the pressed event. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a add row method. This is adds a row to the list box. So I'll start with the name of the list box, people list, and Zojo has autocomplete in its code editor. You can see it's autocompleting, so I'll just press tab. And then you put a period and the name of the uh, method you want to use. So methods are like commands if you haven't done programming before. So as I start typing, you can see that uh, there's autocomplete here as well. So I'm going to choose add row. And then I'll just put a parenthesis and put in what I want it to add. Well, what I want it to add is the text from the name field. So I'll put the name of the name field, there it is, and a dot, just like I did with people list. Only this time I'm accessing what's called a property, which is something that holds data, and a closing parenthesis. So take the text from the name field and add that as a row to the people list. That's it. So now we can run our project and see if it works. So I'll press run. It's going to compile and build the app and launch it. And there it is. So let me type in a name. 
and press add. And there it is. So we've built a simple application for the desktop. I could build this as a standalone app and probably want to have some more functionality before I do that, but you get the idea. And now I'm going to quit the app, just press Command Q. And if I wanted to build this app for Mac OS, for Windows, or for Linux, all I have to do is click these checkboxes, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and I press the Build button right here, and it's going to spit out native versions of these apps for all three platforms. I don't have to write any code that's special to those platforms. I don't have to change my user interface, and it's going to be an absolutely, completely native app for all three platforms. Okay, so now I'm going to build a web version of this same app. And I'm not even going to describe what I'm doing because you're going to be able to tell what I'm doing just by watching. And just so you don't have to watch me type, I'm going to go ahead and copy this code to the clipboard because I'm going to use it again when I make the web version. So here we go. I'm going to make a new project and choose web. Okay, and watch this. So just like on the desktop, you've got text fields and you've got buttons and of course list boxes. In fact, a lot of the controls are the same. You've got check boxes, pop-up menus, radio buttons, sliders, and more. Uh, the web also has a few controls that are unique to it, such as the f web file uploader, which as the name implies is for uploading files to your web application. So as you can see, I'm doing the same things I did last time. Oops, okay, and last but not least, go to the button, same event, pressed event, and we'll paste in that code. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna press run, and this time it's gonna build the app, but it's building a web app this time and it compiles it to machine code just like normal as a native app and it launches a browser because it's a web app so here we are in my browser and i can type in a name oops tom hanks and press my add button and there's tom in the list box so we've built a web version great now hopefully you picked up on the fact that i built this app exactly the way i built the desktop app same kind of controls use the same code and yet it still builds a native application. It's compiled to machine code. And that app generates the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that stuff that you don't need to know to create the app when it, once it runs. So you end up with a completely native web app, but you don't have to learn any of that technology to do it. Last but not least, let's build a mobile app, specifically in this case, an iOS app. So again, in the navigator, we've got a bunch of things. These are specific to iOS in this case. We have a screen, you have your app icon, your launch screen, if you want to add a launch screen, that sort of thing. So I've got a screen here, and I'm just going to build the same app, but now for mobile. So for the mobile version, it's going to be the same procedure, uh, a text field, and I'm going to bring out a button, and then uh, a we call it a table. It's the equivalent of a list box. It works pretty much the same way. Um, obviously the screen is a bit smaller because it's a mobile device instead of a web page or a desktop application. So there's the table, and I'll resize that a bit. But it's basically the same operation. You've still got um, things like you've got sliders and other controls that are the same. Uh, there's a switch control, which is the equivalent of a checkbox, basically works exactly the same way. So last but not least, after I, I'm going to name these things, And then I'm going to add that code. So I'm going to double click and use the pressed event once again and paste in that code. Okay, and I'm going to run it. Okay, so it's compiling the application just like before, launches the iOS simulator, and there's the app. So let's put in Tom Hanks again, and there's Tom in the iOS simulator. Now, this is just running it locally in the simulator. Of course, just like before, I can go back to the app and I can build the app uh, for iOS to run it on an actual iOS device. And you can make layouts both for iPhone and for iPad all in the same app. So you don't have to build two different apps. You can have one app for both iPhone and, and iPad. All right, so in this demo, I built an application for uh, the desktop that could be compiled for Mac, Windows, and Linux, 
for the web, which builds a standalone web server for you that'll serve up your application on the web, uh, or an iOS app uh, for iPad and iPhone. Uh, now, this was a very simple app, but just to give you a taste of what it's like. And of course, we've got a lot of functionality specific to project types for the desktop, for the web, and for mobile. And you can build simple little applications that may be a little utility that helps you with some specific part of your work or you can build very large applications. We have users that have built CAD packages, have uh, created software that runs an entire company. We even have a user who's a scientist and he's written software that analyzes gravitational waves for NASA. So you can build simple applications or very large applications. Really the limitation is just your imagination. Thanks for watching. You can download Zojo at zojo.com. You can use it for free. You only need to buy a license when you want to distribute a standalone app. And follow us on Twitter at Zojo.